I have a pokey device. Where's my pokey device? And I just used it the other day. Oh, what is going on, y'all? We're gonna take this Microtech router that is HAP series, and we're gonna put Arden on it. And it's gonna be fun. It's relatively okay. I only looked at the instructions, but it, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let's go ahead and get started here. All right, let's go ahead and open up the box here. Oh, we have an adapter, which is a 24 volt adapter and the router itself anything else in it nope pretty simple and yeah so let's go ahead and bring up the arden page we are at ardenmesh.org and we're going to go to downloads and download again and we're looking for oh look right at the top here microtech and we got this HAP light. So there's a factory and a system upgrade firmware. So what this means, these two columns is, there is a first firmware for when you first install the software. Then after you do it, the first load, then you can do the system upgrade, which is our much easier. And you can do that through the web page, the web page of the router once you get it going. So let's go ahead and download these. And then we're gonna go back to documents latest installing Arden firmware all right after we go to the installing part we're gonna go down to Microtech and let's look at these instructions it says that we're gonna to have to do a pre execution environment now these are pretty cool a PXE environment is something I haven't played with for a long time I did that like way back in the day when I was doing uh, tech support where we were reloading computers off of a, a centralized server so we will tell the computers to boot off the network and then we can see what options we have to install a firmware or not firmware I'm sorry uh, an operating system and it looks like we'll have to do that too here and they're recommending a program called tiny pex so let's go ahead and try to find that i ended up uh doing a little bit of diving and i found a link to it in a form and i'll go ahead and link in our description below and all the links for everything we're talking about are in the description i like to personally go ahead and download everything like i did before before we start messing with network settings once you start messing with them there's a chance they can lose internet access and then that's hard to go back and get that working again and, and continuing on on the same path so i already have everything downloaded and let's go ahead and now abstract um, px serve and we'll just do extract here seven zip for the win perfect let's go ahead and do the next step of preparing everything and we're going to rename the initial download image or the initial uh, image to rb.elf said that right finally Oink. and we're just going to keep it there for now the next is talking about your IP address and what it wants to do is change your computer's IP address to a static IP address so in this process that your computer doesn't lose an IP address and get a new one. If you have DHCP enabled, this could happen. So we are gonna go ahead and bring up our network options. And from here, we're gonna click change adapter options. And we're gonna right click on my current network adapter and go to properties. I'm gonna find out what my current IP settings are by being up a command prompt and typing IP config and going to go to IP properties and we're going to change them to our current configuration right we got most particularly we're going to look at the IP4 address and that is our current computer's IP address then the next one is going to be default gateway and that's who we're talking to to get to the internet so in the IP address we're going to type your IP address for me it's 10.10.0.17 .10 and the sub NASC is going to be 255 255 zero and then for me again my gateway is going to be 10.10.0.100 and we're going to do the same thing for dns settings 10.10.0.100 and these will be different for you probably a 192 168 something 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 okay 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 We'll just minimize this window because we're probably going to come back to it after we're done and remove the settings. 
Uh, we can close this guy. Next, um, this one took me a while to parse. And it's talking about some of these devices are power over ethernet only. The one I have is a AC, so I have an AC port on it right there. Look at that, perfect. Um, so what we are gonna do is take my ethernet cable, and this is going to my switch that my computer's also hooked up to, or my router. And then I am gonna connect it to the WAN port one, and that is just gonna be this blue port right there. We're not gonna plug it in yet. We are going to configure our PX boot software. And we'll come in here. It says the first thing we're gonna do is open up the config.ini, and we're gonna look for the DHCP settings and look for this line, RFC 951. RFC 951 equal to one. It is in there, no changes. Nice. Next, we're gonna copy the file that we renamed into files. Copy, files, paste. And then we're gonna start the server. So far, pretty easy. Next, we're gonna look at to see if the software is binding to the right IP address. So this um, option 54 DHCP server needs to be our IP address. And with the bind IP checked, then we're going to come down to boot file and then we're going to point it to the file that we just inserted rb there it is uncheck the checkbox for file name if user class blah 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 uncheck it all right this line must match your, your computer and it does and we're okay on that screenshot with the unit turned off, press and hold the reset button, and this is gonna put the router into a reset mode. I like to put that just enough. I don't think I'm hitting the button. There it is. I plug it in. I should see in the software saying download, do right. It says about 30 seconds under the instructions for Linux. Oh, final step here is to click online and then I'll allow access to through the Windows firewall. We'll try this one more time. This is perfectly hitting that reset button. If I could find one of these in one of those wrench sets that comes in, uh, Lord knows whatever you order, they, they come with these. I'm going to have to save that. That's, this is the perfect reset button tool. Holding the reset button. Pushing the power cord, power, power plug in. It's thinking, trying to do something. Waiting about 20 seconds. Aha! There it is. It says release after you see this line. Do file right. Or do read file. And now I got a blinking light and it's doing something. And after that, it says turn it off. Stop, stop. Now it says the node will boot up with a temporary admin and with a default IP address of 192.168.1.1. All right, we're going to try to connect to this. Um, one final note here is if we have this AC adapter, we're going to have to unplug it from the LAN now and plug it into any of the other any of the other ports. Actually, I don't want it to be that one. This is a router. I am going to hook it up to my computer directly. Now, this is an extra step for me. If you had a 192.168 address and your IP address of 1.1 is free, you will not have to do this. I have a second NIC and I can give it an IP address of whatever I want. While Frank figures out uh, what he's doing here, let me go ahead and explain what's going on. I am going into my second NIC settings and we're checking the IP address to make sure it's on a 192.168 network. I just discovered that I already had those from a previous build. But if your computer is on a 10.10 .10 network or any other type of network, you're going to need to change these to a 192.168. 
and you might have to unplug your computer from your router itself. So this way you're not going to assign um, miscellaneous IP addresses to other devices and that can screw up your network too if you have one nick. I have two so let's continue on. Um, and then we're going to bring up a new web page and then we're going to go to 192.168.1.1 Ha ha! Arden! Woohoo! This is my new node. Right, let's go to settings and then we're going to use the password of well the username is root and then hsmm for the password root hsmm sign in there we go we're in the new node uh, we're not going to mess with a lot of settings right now because we're just probably going to jump to the admin page and then tell it to upload the new software there we go new firmware downloads micro and this time we're going to select system upgrade and click upload and now it's uploading the new file and it's going to reboot when it's done there we go that for me took about five minutes for the router to become stable again and uh, we let's refresh the page so let's go ahead and click setup and we're in so we reflash the router. I'm just going to go ahead and enter in some basic information here about me, my call sign. I think these numbers mean something, but they came up automatically. And I like to go ahead and put down the router itself here. And I'm going to call it home. Now from here, all your information is going to be to match your local mesh network. So you're going to have to coordinate with the group in your area that um, sets up and, and runs all this. And you're going to have to co coordinate what channel to be, they use and their bandwidth because these need a match. If they don't match, you're not going to be able to talk to other nodes on the network. So that is it for now. We got the software reflashed from scratch for the factory settings open box to running Arden. And the next step will be to take this node and then have this guy talk to each other via the um, LAN ports. Yay! And then they'll be on a network to each other. So that will be awesome. Well, that's it for now, y'all. Till next time, y'all. Go forth and conquer.